Hello, this is Carol Lemke from BC Gurus, and this is part five of the Secure Zone series. In this video, we will be jumping into BC and going through what user pages you may want to include on your website and how to pull in specific user data on these pages. To give you a basic intro to what we will be covering, first, what do I mean by user pages and how would I structure them? Then going into detail on the individual pages I want to cover, so the account setting pages where a customer can update their details, including their contact information and any CRM fields. Looking at creating a case history page where people can see past web form submissions, uh, going through any templates associated with that and then looking at how to output purchase and quote history information and edit the layouts for that and ending with uh, some other things just calling out a few modules we have not touched on yet that are still very important when it comes to secure zones so when I say user pages I'm referring to any page that requires a user to be logged in in order to view that page for one and for two when they view that page, they'll need to be logged in in order to view any user-specific information, which can be account information, their profile information, any web form submission history, and a web form is just another name for a case, and any purchasing history. So when setting up these user pages, I would first recommend creating a specific folder on the site where all these pages could live. The folder would be called something like users or members. From there, I would create a different page that would display different information for that user. So a page that would show user information could be called, you know, something like account settings. Uh, here is where they would access a form where they could update any user information they wanted to, like contact information, username and password, any other system fields, and any specified CRM fields. Uh, I would also create a case history page. Here they would be able to view any past web form submissions or responses to those submissions by any admin users. And then I would also create a order history page so they could view past orders or quotes in one spot if they ever need to refer back to that. So looking at the account settings page, I would create a page called something like account settings, maybe profile settings, and place that in my users folder. Then I want to add a form to this page where the user can go and update their account details or at least view this information to make sure it's correct. To add this form in, I would go to Secure Zone in the Module Manager and locate the Update Customer Details form. And let's just remove the one that was in there before. So from here we can choose to show a specific CRM form. Uh, we can choose all of them or a certain one. We don't have any created on the site, so there are no other options. We can choose to use an image for the submit button, and then we get a preview of the form below. And you can see that it's pulling in all system fields, and the module within these input fields are basically pulling in any existing data for the system field if it does exist. So if we insert an update and view this page, the user would log in, go to this page and then they can see any of the information they have filled out um, whether it's been added by a back-end admin user or they filled it out by filling out other forms on the site anything that we do know will be pre-populated and anything they want to add say you know work phone number web address city let's just add one and so on they can add they can even change their username password and confirm the password when they hit submit, they will be directed to a system page. The system page they are directed to, if you go to Site Manager System Pages, they are going to be directed to, under Web Forms, the Update Details Form Confirmation page. So if you would like to change this, this is where you would do it. And if we go back to that page, we can see that our information has been updated successfully. The case history page is where a user would be able to view all past web form submissions. Any web form submission is known as a case in BC. To output a list of all past cases, open up the module manager, select secure zone, and go to display list of customer cases. From here you can decide to output all items or only the web form submissions that are associated with a specific workflow. 
as in if you only want to show all of their contact case workflows, you can. If you only want to show web support submissions, you can by workflow classification. Insert that, and if we preview, we can see a few things. We can see the case number, we can see when this case was created, the status of this case, and then the name of the case. If we click on the name, this will take us to the details layout of the case layout template where we can see more details on this case. And if the admin does decide to reply to my case, um, a message would th show up within this thread area. You are also able to output a case search form where users can search for a specific case name or case number. If you insert a search form, you can do that under Secure Zone and select any customer case search form and inserting it. If you want to specify a specific confirmation page, as opposed to having the case results appear below this form, you would update this section ampersand page ID equals the module to ampersand ID equals slash the path of your page. When you save this, BC will change the ampersand to the HTML version of it, that's fine. If you do decide to make a special results page, make sure you one, create the page, and then two, insert the customer case search module onto it, which will look like this. So as a BC admin, anyone that can log into the back end of the site, you are able to respond to a case. To do so, you can either find the customer profile in the back end or go to the cases option in the CRM to view all cases. If you're on the user profile in the back end, you would navigate to cases, select which case you would like to respond to, and then go to the messages section. Here you can see all past messages and create a new message. The user can read the web form message and then respond to it in the back end. It will be coming from the email address that is logged in and it will go to this person's email address once you send the message. The user will not only get an email responded to them, but the message will also show up in their case history detail view if it's set up so in the module layout. So if we go back to the case details page and refresh, we can see the message that the admin typed in. We can see who it's from, the date it was written, and the message. So it's a good way to communicate with your users via email and also so they can view it on the site in a secure zone. To edit the layouts of the case history output, go to Site Manager, Module Templates, and go to Customer Cases Layouts. You are able to edit what appears in the list view and also what appears in the details layout. This is where the message will be pulled through the thread. The Purchase or Quote History page is where a user can view details on any of the products they purchased or requested a quote for. To output this list, open up the module manager, select Secure Zone, and then choose Display List of Customer Orders and Purchases. You can choose to output all orders or all orders in a specific workflow classification. Then when the user logs in, they can see their order history. They will get the invoice, number, the date, how much they spent, and a link to the details page, which will tell them more about the item. And you can change this layout, which we will cover next. Uh, but this will link you to the details layout, and you can see more information. To edit the module templates, what we were just looking at, the list view and details view, you can go to Site Manager Module Templates, Customer Orders Layouts. There is a list view, which you can show what information to output, which we went over. And then there is a details view, which the order name will link to, where you can show more information about that specific invoice. Some other things I just want to call out that you can find in the module manager. If you open up the module manager and go to secure zones, there is a display one if logged in, otherwise zero module. Uh, this is a very powerful module tag, and I just wanted to call it out. It allows you to see if a user is logged in. If the module value is equal to zero on the live site, that means the user is not logged in. If it equals one, that means the user is logged in. This information allows you to show or hide specific content with JavaScript on your site, among other things. Uh, for example, you may want to show a different navigation set or advertisements depending on if someone is logged in or not. Some other tags to be aware of is display who is logged in. This is an easy way to achieve some personalization throughout the site. For example, you could add this to the template 
and it could say welcome back Carol Lemke in my case or the name of the person and some personal message to them after that. The last tag I want to mention is the link to log out of a secure zone. You want to make sure that the user can easily figure out where the logout button is. You never know where a user will be when they are accessing this secure content, their laptop, their phone, or maybe on a public computer in a library or in a cafe. So make it so they don't have to dig so your secure content isn't left out there because they don't know how to log out.